closing. Yep, I think great. Okay, so this is the September 14 meeting of the Groton Planning and Zoning Commission. Uh, Jeff Pritchard is the chair. Staff tonight is Bruce Lofgren and Deb Jones. Uh, there's a couple of opportunities to address the commission tonight. Uh, first being under public hearings for the days in conversion and the second public communications. In order to do that, you will have to raise your virtual hand on an Apple device. You can find that by hovering at the top of your screen on a PC at the bottom. And if you're on the phone, it's star nine. Okay, so I'll call the uh, Planning and Zoning Commission meeting to order. First item is roll call. I don't see Barbara here. So everybody else is present and I'll sit the person that's fresh from vacation back <laughs> to sit for Barbara. So to have uh, Steve Hudicek sit for Barbara Tarbox. Next item is a public hearing. We have a special permit 374 days in conversion. Is the applicant. Yes, they are attendees. I'm going to our attendees. Okay, it looks like the applicants are here. So, yeah, so everyone knows this uh, continuation hearing that was on August, was on August 12th or 10th. Um, and yes, yeah, so Sergio is here and also Mark Camo. So Sergio, if you want to um, so Sergio, if you want share your screen, share your plans, share your screen, share your plans, start a presentation. We seem to be having an echo. So if all the commissioners who um, mute themselves, maybe that will help. Yeah, somebody must have two things on. Hmm? Two sound sources on at once. Can you all hear me okay? Yes. Could you just state your, your name for the record? Certainly. Uh, for the record, Sergio Cherenzia with Cherenzia and Associates. Uh, with offices located at 99 Mechanic Street in Pawcatuck, Connecticut. Uh, Mr. Chair and, and members of the uh, staff, if it pleases you, I can, I can get started with the presentation. Yes, go ahead. I don't know if my, uh, excuse me, I don't know if my client uh, has arrived yet. Um, Mark, if you don't mind, uh, if you could just text John and see if he'll be joining, but I don't want to delay. Uh, it looks like he's here. We'll promote him. Oh, he's, he is. Yeah, okay, thank he you. He just joined. Great. So I'm going to uh, uh, share my screen. And uh, you should be looking at the, uh, the proposed uh, site plan um, that has uh, been prepared and supplied to you as part of our submittal. Um, Going to very briefly go over what the existing site conditions are, and then uh, get into what the uh, what, what the uh, conversions of the site um, are proposed um, in accordance with uh, the, your zoning regulations. And uh, um, Mark Camo will follow me to uh, uh, go over some of the um, the building nuances with the uh, the building conversion. Um, so uh, once again, thank you for uh, entertaining uh, this application. Um, my, uh, I'm here on behalf of uh, the applicant, uh, John Karendian of um, Blue Rock Properties Group. Um, with me this evening, as I mentioned, is Mark Camo, project architect. And uh, the uh, application before you this evening is a uh, conversion of an, a, a, um, a, an extended stay hotel uh, to a uh, multifamily uh, apartment complex. Uh, the existing si site was previously permitted as a, uh, as a hotel. Uh, it's currently a days in. 
the existing site contains uh, a 60 room hotel uh, with three stories. Zoom in a little bit there. Um, it's about 11,755 square foot building and footprint. Um, the site has uh, on-site drainage amenities, um, uh, on-site uh, uh, public utilities uh, that serve the site, um, a pool, a uh, recreational pool, uh, parking area, landscaping, uh, and other uh, amenities associated with the hotel. Uh, under the existing uh, conditions, uh, the existing, the, the curb cut or the access uh, to the site is along Kings Highway. Uh, I believe to the, just want to get my bearing here, to the south, southeast. Um, and the property also has frontage on Gold Star Highway, uh, as well as Kings Highway. And the, the stormwater on the site generally flows overland in a northeasterly direction. Um, some of the drainage on the site is collected um, by uh, catch basins in the parking lot, which was all designed and approved uh, through, the, uh, through the town of Groton. Um, and then discharges to a stormwater basin uh, in the northeast portion of the property. Um, and you can see this large area here where you can see where there's uh, discharge locations. Um, the property is located within a commercial uh, regional zone. Uh, the surrounding properties consist of the Groton Inn and Suites, uh, multi-business retail building to the southwest, and uh, the Five Guys restaurant is actually to the, um, I believe, to the north northeast of the property. Um, and there is actually an access, uh, you can see down in the, the western portion of the property, to the parking lot and area, which we don't show on this this site plan just to simplify it, but uh, I could bring up an area, and, and I believe most of you are familiar with the Groton Inn and Suites and the and the, uh, the other businesses in, in that area. Um, the uh, the property is surrounded to the northeast, northwest, and southwest uh, with zoning of uh, commercial, regional, and to the southeast, it's um, zoned uh, residential R12. Um, so the proposed condition, uh, we're taking this 60 room uh, hotel and converting it to a 60 a unit uh, residential multifamily apartment building. Um, each of the rooms, uh, Mark will go into a little more detail, will be a single bedroom um, and, and have uh, just a small apartment amenities, you know, open layout with bathrooms, uh, a bedroom, a kitchenette, uh, those type of amenities. Um, there will also be some common amenities, which he'll go over uh, placed on the first floor, uh, stuff like laundry and, and common recreational space, like I believe a gym, uh, which Mark will get into a little bit later. Um, and as a part of this proposal, we're also proposing a, an outdoor recreational facility, which uh, doesn't currently exist in the southern portion of the lot. Uh, you can see that there's a, a parking area uh, in that southern portion, which we're going to eliminate the pavement, the impervious surface associated with it, which will be beneficial to the uh, drainage um, system, the stormwater management, uh, given that this is in an aquifer protection zone, uh, aquifer protection area. Um, that area will be converted to uh, recreational space, uh, might have some sitting areas, some barbecue areas, uh, maybe bocce court, that kind of stuff. Um, that hasn't all been, been finalized, but that's the, the generally that the, what they'll be, be using it for. Um, also the pool, will remain uh, as an amenity uh, to the apartment complex. Um, we've uh, added in um, with the uh, recommendation of staff to make sure that we have appropriate crosswalks and sidewalks uh, so that uh, people that are living in the facility can safely navigate through the parking lot uh, across the traveled ways and go from the recreational space back to the pool. So this is really you know, a out, nice outside uh, recreational space that'll be an added amenity to the apartment complex, which doesn't already exist now, um, added to the benefit of reducing the impervious area on the site. Um, in addition to uh, reducing the impervious area by uh, adding the recreational space, uh, your regulations also require that we uh, had a reduction in the number of parking spaces. Uh, we, the, the, the minimum, amount of parking that is required is 0.75 spaces per unit. And the maximum allowed is 1.1 spaces per uh, unit. So uh, 
doing the math for 60 units, um, we're allowed, uh, we need at least 45 spaces. Um, and if we uh, max it out, which we are, we're gonna use uh, 66 spaces. And my client would, would prefer to have more spaces in case, in case any of the units yeah. have double occupancy. However, the regulations uh, do restrict the, the maximum amount of uh, parking that would be allowed. Um, but in conjunction with that, we also have to increase the amount of landscaping per your regulations. So you can see in the uh, proposed site layout, what we've done is retrofitted, same as we're doing with the building, we're doing with the site, we're retrofitting some of those parking spaces to be some landscaped islands, curbed landscaped islands. Uh, we're adding a dumpster uh, for the, uh, the apartment complex um, and a loading zone, uh, you can see at the northern portion of the property. So um, it actually all worked out relatively well um, for the fit of this site that the, um, the additional landscaping that we needed and the reduction of parking uh, worked out well. So we have that, we are uh, obta obtaining that 66 maximum uh, parking space, amount of parking spaces. Um, the building will remain uh, largely unchanged. Accesses will remain the same, sidewalks, that kind of stuff, besides the, what I've um, alluded to uh, for, the, uh, for the improvements for, for cir uh, circulation and pedestrian safety. Uh, we've added some signage, um, uh, made sure that we have adequate uh, uh, ADA spaces, uh, handicap spaces. Um, utilities will remain, remain largely unchanged. We're trying to keep the site you know, as less, least disturbance as possible. Um, all the existing utilities, water, uh, sewer um, shall remain, electric communication, everything um, should be uh, able to be accommodated uh, with this conversion because there is very little change that is happening going from a 60 unit hotel to a 60, um, 60 unit uh, multifamily apartment space. Um, we did a, a, an evaluation of the, uh, of the um, stormwater system and uh, because of the reduction in the impervious and uh, um, and the fact that um, uh, that we're not proposing an intensity of use, no more, uh, no more, you know, vehicles as uh, than what's already there, things like that. Um, we've we've been able to maintain the stormwater system the same way as it is. All of the catch basins, piping, everything is remain can remain as status quo. Uh, there's no grading changes, that kind of stuff. Um, so it's it's an overall improvement. Uh, we also, as part of this application, have offered up an upgraded operation and maintenance um, so that that will be, have to be adhered to. Um, the basin, the stormwater basin in the north, northeast uh, portion of the property is a bit overgrown. Um, it's nice because it shields it from view, but um, could use some manicuring and some, and some, um, and some attention uh, for, you know, making sure that all the pipes and catch basins are cleared, um, that all the sumps are cleaned out and that we can uh, make sure that that functions in perpetuity. Um, but it's overall, I, I did a walk through it. It's, it's in very good shape. It's almost functioning as a wet basin where there's a lot of um, species that are growing in there. It's, it's actually a very almost healthy ecosystem onto itself. <clears throat> um, as I had uh, mentioned, um, we will have the, uh, the updated operation and maintenance that'll be have to be adhered to. We are in a water resource protection district. Um, so as such, we will make, we're will making sure that we're handling our stormwater accordingly, but also that uh, any hazardous materials, which we don't anticipate, anything beyond that would be used in a residential setting and any single family residence would be used. Um, all of it will be uh, stored properly, listed as if there's any, uh, anything that's being uh, stored in high quantity. Um, Bruce and Deb were concerned of the pool as mainly one of the biggest things. If there's going to be pool chemicals, um, my client will be bringing in a pool, you know, a pool company to to treat that pool, um, or, or it'll be part of an association um, that uh, you know that that will be maintained uh, along with the rest of the grounds, um, so that uh, not there shouldn't be any significant hazardous materials that have to be stored on site. Same for any, you know, any cleaning supplies that have to be uh, brought in for common areas that will all be brought in from off site. Uh, we don't anticipate that will be any significant amount of, of uh, hazardous materials that would be 
uh, stored, stored on site. Um, landscaping, uh, same thing will be uh, typical maintenance, uh, snow removal, uh, that, that type of thing uh, will still be maintained um, and done in accordance with the operation and maintenance plan. Um, any disturbance to the site that's temporary, such as pulling up the pavement for the new recreational facility or uh, adding the landscape to islands. Um, we have a sediment erosion and sediment control plan to make sure that uh, we don't sully the stormwater system. Um, you know, if we put straw wattle or, uh, you know, some um, barriers around the catch basins or silt sacks, just to make sure if there's any overflow of sediment that we capture it ahead of time before it, uh, it, it ruins any of the stormwater facilities. Um, I will touch upon that uh, we did do a traffic analysis of this and just very briefly, overall, um, we did a trip generation uh, in accordance with um, the, uh, the uh, excuse me, Institute of, of Transportation Engineers, uh, the latest edition um, and uh, used uh, multifamily housing apartments versus a, um, a hotel use. And overall, we see a, a, a reduction um, I believe it's an average of 122 trips per day. So uh, that there's a lower intensification of use going from a hotel uh, to, uh, to a single family residences or a multi, excuse me, multifamily residences. Um, so we shouldn't see any more impact or uh, adverse impact to any of the surrounding streets or, or Kings Highway or any of the other surrounding streets uh, because we'll be actually uh, anticipating a reduction in the amount of traffic going in in and out of the office uh, in and out of the uh, the apartment complex um so with that i think that covers a majority of my presentation i'd be happy to entertain any questions unless uh it pleases the commission to uh hear from mark Camo first why don't we go through mark's presentation first and is he available yep you should be on. Um, yep. I see you are. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can see you too. Excuse okay. me, Mark. Do you want me to bring up your uh, your plans, or did you want to share? Um. Yeah, I might as well bring them up. Um, hold on a second. Okay. So you can see that I'm sharing my screen. Yes. Okay. So I, I think um, I think you're going to see more of this in the future. Uh, by and large, there's a lot of hospitality structures that are um, uh, that are non non performing assets, and especially in the in the day of COVID here, and um, and we have an under representation of um, of, of apartment uh, of, of residences. So I think we'll we'll see a lot more of this coming coming along. Uh, this is, I think, a great opportunity to take uh, a fairly non-performing um, days in and suites. That's uh, I've been to the site so many times uh, since the spring, and find a pretty much an empty parking lot um, given the conditions. And to convert this to uh, to apartments, I think, is um, is a great idea. Um, by and large, on the main level, we'll end up with. Um, with six on each side of the corridor for a total of 12 single um, room, single bedroom apartments, as you can see. The colors just show you each apartment. Um, so um, one apartment, two, three, four, five, six. Um, and then the same thing on, on the other side. There's nuances in between them because of bearing walls and things like that. On the main level, um, we'll add uh, a mailbox bank um, and some other, you know, uh, amenities that that more are more related to um, to apartments. Um, the utility room will stay the same. Uh, this room will become a recreation room uh, with with you know, whatever recreation devices uh, Blue Rock puts in there, pool tables, things like that. A place for the residents to go down. Um, they'll be uh, uh, we'll maintain the bathrooms to the pool over here. Pool service. Fitness center and community room will reside over here. And then the laundry that currently services the hotel will remain in state. Although I think it'll be in de-intensified because um, for, a, for, a, for a hotel use, uh, you know, the house is washing linens all day long. And that's what it was designed for, where this will be residents that, as we know, don't do laundry at, to the scale that, um, that we see residents do uh, at the same time. 
if I move to the second floor, which repeats the third and fourth floor, there are eight on, on this side of the corridor, and there are eight single uh, bedroom units on this side of the corridor. Um, so three stories, two through four times 16 is 48, plus the 12 on the main level is, uh, is 60 for a total of units. Um, so there's 60 bedrooms now, there are 60 units that we propose. So what's the difference? There are large, within the structure that's there, there are very, very small studios and there are very large two bedroom um, units. And so we're kind of homogenizing the whole thing because with, um, you know, with, with, with fire codes and things like that, um, the studios make no sense. Um, and dead end corridors and length of travel with the two bedrooms, um, it doesn't make sense either. So to homogenize it all into one bedroom units, it does make a lot of sense. Um, the outside of the building, the structure itself, um, the windows are, are in pretty good shape. The, the siding uh, is in great shape. The roof is in great shape. The building itself, as you see, it won't change right now. Um, the landscape around it, of course, will, will change quite a bit. And there may be enhancements later on um, in the future. But for the most part, the exterior, as you see, it will remain the same. We're maintaining all the same fenestration. The party walls that were built uh, as a part of this um, uh, will all remain in place. We're just kind of rearranging what we're doing uh, within those. Um, so so that's, uh, that's the second floor. That's the third floor. And you can see it's the same as the second floor. And that's the fourth floor. All right. Um, so that I, with that, uh, I can't think of anything else that I would cover, and I'll stop and flip that back over to Sergio, unless there's any questions. Okay. No, we'll go go through uh, the town staff, and then if there are any public ho comments, and then to the commission. So. Sure, so, thank, thank you, Mr. Uh, Chairman. This is Bruce uh, Loft, Bruce. and Development Services. Um, I, I don't have too much to add. Um, that was a pretty comprehensive summary of the project. Uh, but just so everyone knows, this is the special permit application we are reviewing right now and the public hearing for that. Um, this is similar to some of the other applications you've been seeing recently, where it's a conversion from one use into a multi-unit conversion, which triggers the special permit and then the site plan that we'll see later on in the agenda. Um, so this is in a, a CR zoning district. So multi-unit dwelling conversions are permitted um, and they're subject to conditions of, the, of section 5.1-8H. And those conditions um, stipulate that there can't be an expansion more than 10% of, of um, the footprint, which is not the case in this, in this application. Um, they also require that there's at least one or yeah, one laundry unit per 10 units. And um, these floor plans are showing six units for 60 dwelling units. Um, also, it does require that public recreation space be provided where applicable. And in this case, there's actually a pretty considerable number of, amount of recreation and public space there. Uh, you have the pool, you have the recreation room, you have the new bocce area in the back there. And I can share my screen um, looking at this. So there are there there are quite another um, there are a good amount of amenities for for this development more so than we've seen in some, some previous conversions. Um, so outside of that, the the application does meet all the landscaping and street tree requirements of the zoning regulations. They are adding um, quite a few trees here. I'm not sure if you saw. The landscape plan here, but they're adding six three trees along Gold Star Highway here. Um, there'll be a tree in each new island, also trees along the perimeter of the parking, and a few more along Kings Highway, maybe where some of the other trees had, had died over the years. Um, this corner right here has a lot of existing natural vegetation that's a good buffer for the recreation area. It also provides a good screening from, from Kings Highway here. Um, as Mr. Sharenzia mentioned, I, I think he mentioned that a portion of this site is in the Water Resource Protection District. Um, I believe it's just this half of the site over here. Um, 
the other half is now located in the Water Resource Protection District. Uh, this, because there's no footprint expansion, um, this isn't a new development. Um, it's not even considered a redevelopment in the WRPD. So a lot of those requirements that we would see in a new development don't apply to this application because there's no footprint expansion and there's actually a reduction in the impervious area on the site and not an increase. So for that reason, um, it was determined that there didn't need to be any improvements to the stormwater system, just some general maintenance and an operation maintenance schedule that was submitted with the application for the existing um, pension area over here. Um, and with that, yeah, I don't think I have anything else to add at this time. I'm happy to answer any questions. Right. Oh, also, the, la the last point, I think I said at the last meeting, the, uh, the mailings were in order. We did get those, so um, all the butters were uh, properly notified. Okay, thank you, Bruce. Does anyone in the public wish to address the commission on this application? You see any hands raised, Deb? No, I don't. Okay. And we'll open it up to the uh, commission to for any questions they have. I'll start with you, Michael Kane. There we go. Uh, oh, hi, Jeff. Thank you. Um, so, uh, I uh, looks. I mean, I don't really have too many questions. Uh, I, I wanted to see what the sidewalk situation is. Currently, and, and I'm assuming it's going to remain that way. So there are. Um, I, I think that question was for me. Um, the, so the, the exist. There are existing sidewalks along Gold Star Highway here, along the whole frontage. There are also existing sidewalks along the Kings Highway frontage here. Um, so, so they they don't need to add any new ones because those are existing. Um, there are sidewalks along. The outside of the building in between the parking area and the, and the structure. Um, the only new additional sidewalk that staff requested was right here connecting the new um, recreation area here. Okay. Uh, I see an area for trash. Is there an area for recycles? Is it just dumps? Is the, does the trash area include recycled? That's a good question. Sergio, can you answer that? Yeah, I believe there's adequate space either in the dumpster or in next to it. If it was a stipulation, we could make it larger to, to accommodate a recycling uh, a reciprocal, reciprocal, excuse me, receptacle. Um, that's up in the, yeah, if you can zoom in, Bruce, the Northwest corner. Um, we have space over there if we had to make that area larger. Mm -hmm. That um, should probably be a site plan. That would be a site plan. Uh, concern. Okay. All right. No, good comment, but we should remember no, to that's save, fine. It, save it when we discuss this site plan. Okay. Oh, okay. Yep. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I don't mind bringing the extra items up now. But no, that's it. We're good. Okay. All right. Hal's on. Um, I don't think I have any problem. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Yes. Okay. I've, I've got some new sound happening here, and I don't know how much is messing things up. Um, I don't think I have any problem with it. I'll have some comments for the site plan, but in terms of the conversion and whatnot, I just want to make sure I, I didn't see it in, it sounds like site plan, but it, it goes to the conversion. So the existing sign in the corner uh, the northern corner that's coming down and a new sign is going to go up. Is that true? Um, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't think that there'll be any need for for sign. My my client is is on. We didn't we we, we focused more on just, uh, you know, signage that for for safety and, and, and access and things like that. So so we really didn't broach the subject of the actual days and sign. So you would have to address that. I don't know if there would really be a need for it um, any for anymore, but I he, I can't speak for him. John, did you want to? Well, the yes. other reason I oh, mentioned mention it is that. I uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, the sign um, would just really be for you know um, 
to elaborate the name of, I guess, uh, you know, the apartment complex um, to have some kind of presence. Um, you know, and that, that would really be uh, the only reason to really have a sign to let people know that it's not a hotel uh, any longer and that uh, it's an apartment complex um, and to just keep that presence there. But, you know, it's nothing that is, you know, so direly needed. But so I'll leave it up to you guys with what uh, route you want to go with that. Okay. Yeah. Well, I already mentioned that. So that, that. That made me kind of question what was going on here. The sign on Gold Star Highway, uh, that's a hotel sign. It's made to be visible from the highway and it shouts to the world, whatever name you put on it, uh, this thing is some kind of a hotel. If it's a place where people live, they need nothing like it. Maybe or maybe you have the name of the hotel on the building and the real name of it would be back here on, on King's Highway where you actually do enter the building if you're not going to go through Groton Inn and Suites parking lot, which is, I guess this originally was an appendage to Groton Inn and Suites because it never had a foyer, never had a, uh, a reception area. Okay. Is that true? Yeah. It never had a reception area? You just have to check in and to cross the street? I don't, I don't know how you check into this building. Oh, how you get in? It would be the... It's the, if we're looking at the area. No, I, I see the doors. Yes. No, I, no, I see, I see the doors. Uh -huh. But once you're into the building, mm -hmm. there was never a check-in desk. So yeah, the check-in desk is right on the, the, center, the center entrance on the left side. Yep, right there. There's a, okay. there's a reception, well, there's a reception uh, de a desk there at the moment. At the moment, okay, because it's all that's all, that whole area is only about nine foot wide, ten foot wide, sort of an afterthought. So it looks like it was meant to be checked in someplace else, and then it didn't work, whatever it was. So yeah. just when this became standalone, then you end up with something. It doesn't matter. I I I get this. As far as a conversion is concerned, I don't want a problem, but as far as that sign is concerned, I don't think it has any business being on a hotel on a, uh, a residential apartment building. That's a hotel sign. And I would hope that that kind of goes away or gets changed considerably. There's no reason to announce to people on Gold Star Highway that this is a residence. Sure, well, whatever the board, whatever uh, you guys you know want in that regard, we're totally up for, uh, you know, okay. for doing that, not a problem at all. Can you bring that concern up when we do the site plan discussion? Uh, absolutely. The only reason I brought it up was I was questioning what yeah. this conversion really was since it was leaving that sign. But if they're okay with removing it, that takes away all my questions. I'm I'm good with this. Okay. Yeah, well, we should probably make sure it gets discussed at the site plan, uh, even though it'll probably be a technical item. But so, so you yeah. have any comments? Thanks. No, I don't have any comments. Thank you. No questions. No, no questions. Steve Hodachuk. Um, just one general and one technical. Um, on page seven of the application, I, I kind of got lost when Mark was discussing the number of units. Um, on page seven of the application, it says number of new units, none, new, reduction in overall units. But I thought it was 60 going to 60. So Am I missing something? Yeah, I, I can speak to that. Uh, Mark Camo here. Um, uh, a, a couple of months ago when we had first applied, uh, we did think that we were going to combine um, some of the studios to, um, uh, to take two studios, which were separate units and make them a single unit. Uh, but then as we continued further and noticed the, some of the enormous two bedroom units, um, we split those. And so what we consolidated became split and basically equaled zero. So we thought we were gonna end up with a net of 56 before, um, but by, by code and for just a basic, you know, ergonomics of having a, a really plausible apartment, um, the way that everything worked out in, in terms of the plan, um, the plans that I showed you, it's, it's better that we have 61 bedroom units. 
it just completely, you know, it, it rearranges the spaces, but they're much better spaces. What we thought we'd consolidate before, we, we, we won't be consolidating. Okay. All right. And then the second question was, um, I'm not familiar with the construction of, you know, the hotel as it is now, but is there any fire code differences between calling something a hotel room versus, um, you know, an apartment? And, you know, does the fire marshal have to weigh in on any of this? That might be a staff question. Sure, I, I can take that. Um, in terms of the fire code, um, I'm not I'm not sure what the difference would be between a hotel room and a, you know, one bedroom apartment residence. Um, but the fire marshal um, did receive this application. He was present at the staff review and at that time, I think we were more discussing um, things such as fire lanes and kind of the outside elements of the building because after, if they were to receive approvals for these tonight or um, what happens is um, more detailed building plans are submitted to the building official and the fire marshal reviews it at that time. Okay. So I think, I think if there was something really substantial that jumped out that would affect this proposal, he would have said something, but those type of details with the sprinklers or or firewalls, I think is more technical that happens at the building permit state. Okay, all right. Um, and I think, yeah, that's uh, all my comments. It looks like a good application. Okay, Kevin Fredfall. Um, so like others, I have some questions on the, um, when we get to the site plan, but as far as the special permit is concerned, um, just want to commend the applicant um, for their ability to step up within a total available market in Groton where this is um, a, a great need to be able to service it in this fashion. And as I said, hopefully we also have a positive um, site plan, but this is, this is a good plan. This is it good for commerce? So th thank you. Thank you so much. Really appreciate the compliment. Thank you. All right. Um, I had no additional questions. We have a motion that was prepared by staff. I assume everybody's looked at it. Does anyone have any concerns? with the uh, proposed motion? Well, I, I think, Mr. Chairman, I think we should close the public hearing first before the oh, motion. Oh, yeah, you're right, we should. If there are no other questions, uh, I'll make a motion then to close the public hearing. Is there a second? Second. It's moved and seconded, so we'll vote on motion to close the public hearing. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion is carried unanimously. So we'll go back to the proposed motion. Are there any questions on or problems that anybody sees with it? If not, then I'll make a motion to approve special permit 374 Bays N 135 Gold Star Highway to convert the existing building from a hotel to a 60 unit multi unit building. Findings and reasons for approval. The commission finds that this application complies with section 5.1-8.H, multi-unit dwellings, conversion of the zoning regulations. The commission also finds that this application complies with the special permit criteria in section 9.4-6 of the zoning regulations in that it does not alter the essential characteristics of the area does not cause traffic congestion or safety conflicts and does not conflict with the purposes of these regulations. Is there a second? Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, then we'll vote on the motion for special permit 374. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any, any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion is carried unanimously. And we'll move on to the next item is approval of minutes of our previous meetings. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of August 10th, 2021 minutes. Does anyone have any corrections? Um, I, I had one comment on uh, page seven, uh, where it says motion 
I don't know, at the very top, chairman asked if there was more discussion needed. Discussion was held as to what type of storage is offered in the apartments. And at this time, there was no additional storage is offered at the facility. We had actually uh, asked that to be a technical item. Well, yeah, but it's not required, I thought it was. Oh, you wanted to say? Well, we had we had okay. we had to have that I conversation, and that. it was I was you know at that point I was told that it was going to be a technical item that there would be storage. I don't re I don't recall. I recall the discussion, but I no, didn't. no, I did. Well, I I when I I went back uh, bef just before this meeting, and I did watch the video and I did say that I mean you and I had the conversation right and then it was then and then it ended with can could this be made as a technical item and yeah. uh I believe it was Deb who was confirmed that sure so we can we can amend the minutes to reflect that yeah just so long I mean I, I don't know you know I mean it's not in the reg but it's just so if there was well, some space. If it's something that was stated like that, it should be in the yeah. minutes. Hmm? Yeah, that's why when I didn't see that, I I because the way I read it here, it doesn't sound like there would be any, but I just wanted to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Thank you. That's all. Thank you. That's all. Anyone have anything else? <laughs> no other comments? <laughs> And uh, uh, and we'll vote on approval of the minutes as as amended. All, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any opposed? Any abstentions? Somebody's got something on. Is that yours, Hal? That might be. Let me go back to my headphones. What's that okay. success? Okay, so the new system, but so the uh, motion is carried unanimously. Okay, so next item is, is yes. Well, you have two speakers. Work to do that. A speaker and a microphone. No, always did. Just they're just new speakers. Huh. Oh, maybe they're more sensitive. Or something. All right. Uh, the next item is public communications. Does anyone on the commission have any communications to report? No one. I had a couple items. Uh, I did receive a letter from uh, the town clerk indicating that. Uh, Paula Zapari has resigned from the uh, commission. And I also uh, had a, we served a, a comment a week and a half ago on the weekend, Labor Day weekend, regarding a concern with noise coming from uh, two events down at uh, Willow Point at the Harbor View landing site. It's pretty noisy where, where we are, where I was, and also where the person on No Ank Road was, and I guess across the river too. Other than that, I guess we did also receive the uh, couple of comments from the public uh, that were sent out to us. Does staff have any public communications or? No, nothing. No. Is anyone in the audience for us, a public wish to address the commission tonight? Yep, I see a couple of hands raised. Would you recognize them? All right, Beth Tillman. Good evening, commissioners. Thank you for allowing me to join this meeting. I want to reiterate my concerns that you are receiving pressure about the Mystic Oral School um, lack of application and a desire to change things up so that 
a more dense development would be allowed. I would ask you to adhere, please, to the RU80 designation existing on that piece of property. I also have learned, to my dismay, that the planning department has once again um, hidden applications and preferred developers from the public eye, most specifically on the Pleasant Valley School conversion, where we are told we will be very pleased with what is going to happen. I am not very pleased with anything that has to do with the secrecy of the group that thinks they know better than the taxpayers what is good and necessary and best for the town of Groton. So knowing that you are going to be receiving an application because there has been certain stonewalling about it, um, I ask that for Pleasant Valley, you adhere to the RM designation in its strictest forms for anything that comes in from the preferred developer who is yet unnamed. Thank you for letting me speak. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Um, Sarah, nope, Bruce McDermott. Hi, good evening. Uh, it's a pleasure to address all you guys. Uh, I do have some uh, concerns. Uh, I'm speaking for a bunch of us neighbors up here on Noank Road because of uh, what Jeff Pritchard alluded to earlier with some noise coming from the uh, Harborview landing site. Uh, there's more to it than that. For instance, uh, that happened to be because of a wedding that they had, and I believe it's the last one. But we have a noise problem over there from those guys almost on a regular basis because when those folks come in, from wherever they come in from, that's an open area and it's during the summer and they essentially party pretty much all night long. It's, um, it can go on till uh, the wee hours of the morning. That's not been addressed. I have talked to the owner and asked him to do something about it and to include it in his uh, information that he gives to his guests, but there's really no enforcement of it. It just goes on and on. And it, I'm pretty close to it. I'm 100 yards away, and it's kind of a, a low-lying area, and we just get a lot of noise from that all, all across this part of Noank Road. So I would really like the uh, special permitting to address that particular situation, if it's possible. Uh, with regard to the uh, music that occurs a few times when they do do that, um, this was egregiously loud. It was, it was uh, hearable all the way up to Route 1, across over to Stonington on the other side of the river. Um, the owner is not reachable. I tried to reach him. Other people tried to reach him. He, he's just not available. And that's really the main problem. He does not live there. So as a consequence, almost anything goes if nobody's going to take any responsibility for telling them that they have to shut down at 10 o'clock. Uh, some neighbors called the police. They went down there and apparently shut it down. Uh, so that, that worked. But nonetheless, I, I don't want to deal with that kind of a problem. I mean, I know the owner. I like him. I think he's probably wanting to do the right thing, but it just doesn't happen. So if there's nobody there on site that's responsible to take any action when we have loud guests, which is pretty usual, or music, then that's a problem. Um, I think there are ways to mitigate the noise that comes from these bands and DJs. I don't know what that would be, but certainly just putting the, taps, the flaps down on a tent would help. Uh, there are probably some portable things that could be used to mitigate that kind of sound, but it was really terribly loud. So those are the, the main concerns, and the main one is not just the music, it's the fact that the guests are just loud all night long. You know, they come in from New York, New Jersey, or wherever, they have a few drinks, they're outside partying, 
and uh, the sound carries probably over to Mason's Island, I would imagine, but I can certainly hear it, and uh, my neighbors can. So I've had people wanting to just get up a petition so that they could address these concerns, but I told them that let me try and, and talk to uh, planning and zoning and see if we can reach some kind of an accommodation. Um, that's, uh, that's, I think, our main concern, really. Um, I don't see anything else that uh, I really want to talk about, but uh, if we could arrange for some kind of enforcement, if that doesn't happen, uh, but mainly it's not having somebody on site that will take responsibility for problems that do occur. There's nothing like that anywhere else in Groton. So this is a real peculiar situation, and it's right out in the middle on the harbor. It's a great view. That's why they can command those kinds of prices. But we all have a nice view here, and we like our peace and quiet, and uh, our quality of life is definitely impacted by this operation. And hopefully we can do something about it to keep it down to a dull roar. Well, thank you for listening anyway. Anybody have any questions there I, I can answer? No? no? Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else, Deb? Uh, yes. Sarah Dove. Uh, hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes. Uh, uh, good evening. My name is John Curry. I'm using uh, Sarah Dub's computer, and I live at uh, 102 School Street, uh, just across the Amtrak rail line from Willow Point. It's a uh, friendly, well-kept neighborhood, not unlike most neighborhoods in the town of Groton, peaceful and quiet. Well, it was until the town of Groton permitted the Harborview development on Casino Road the right to play amplified music. This has changed the quality of summer evenings completely. The music, live or DJed, is inescapable to all the neighbors on this site. Whether you're sitting on your deck, patio, porch, or lawn, or you're inside your house with the windows open, their music has become your music. I'm not here to argue town statutes and such. Over the years, we have all witnessed a large degree of discretion and leeway some town officials have had on, on numerous issues. Instead, I'm simply asking this board to admit to themselves and others that if this situation existed in their backyard, they would be upset. This is very simply a question of right and wrong. One person's right to do something should never infringe on a neighbor's right not to be affected. On behalf of myself and most of my neighbors, please rescind this permit. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else, Ted? Hmm? That's all. That's it. All right, then we'll move on to uh, next uh, agenda item of site plans, SIT 21, 12 days in conversion. Does the applicant have any, or staff have anything additional to identify before we discuss this item? If not, I'll open it up then to uh, commissioners to for any of their comments or questions regarding the site plan application for the redevelopment on the days in conversion on Gold Star Highway. Uh, so I'll start with uh, Hugh Michael Kane. You had your one there we go. go. All right, here I am. So I, I already uh, addressed the recycles. If we could uh, find a way to have a container in there for uh, recycles. And then I wanted to ask, there's a bike rack shown there, but I can't 
tell how many, I mean, we've got 60 units here and it looks like a, a bike rack that's gonna probably hold two bicycles or maybe three. I, I don't know, it doesn't seem sufficient to me, but is that the only bicycle rack in this entire complex? Yeah, yes, it is, and it holds six bikes. Six bikes, yeah. It, if it so pleases the commission, we could maybe add another one if it's necessary. And then where do you do, uh, where, where does a bike, can you bring a bicycle inside? Um, Mark may be able to, I don't see why you wouldn't. Most most buildings you, you can fit a bicycle in and could probably get fitted into your apartment, but uh, Mark may want to opine on that a little bit further. Yeah, the, where it gets a little sketchy is when uh, tenants bring bicycles in that encroach upon the, um, the egress, the fire egress, the corridors. Um, so by and large, most condominiums and apartment buildings don't allow storage of bikes in the hallway. And unless people bring them in, into their units, um, which, which is okay, it's kind of hard to enforce. There doesn't seem to be a magic number as to um, how many bike racks are appropriate. Um, you know, when we look at the demographics of the number of people that, that will ride bikes uh, versus the geography of where they will ride the bike, um, and much of the area around this, this structure is, I, I don't know how safely bikeable it is. <laughs> If you go down Gold Star Highway, down Route 12, you're kind of taking your life in your own hands. Um, so I, I would hate to have to provide something that truly won't come to fruition. I, I, it'd be great if there was kind of an organic way that uh, that, that could be felt out so that uh, I'm sure that John would uh, would stipulate to providing whatever the, the appropriate amount of bicycle rack uh, storage would be uh, required uh, for the tenants in use. Uh Bruce, is there anything in our regulations that says just how many bicycle spots there's supposed to be? I don't believe there is, but. No, there, there is. Um, and I believe it applies to this. I think it's one space for every 10 units. And I think there are six spaces here. Like, I think that's why they designed it that way. Okay. I'm, I'm uh, done asking questions. I'm sort of disappointed in that. I don't, I think that we need to address this in our regulations. I mean, I see young people today, we have a bicycle store now that's selling electric bikes. Uh, uh, all the young people that I know, that's how they're getting around. So, and, and we need to, to address our regulations so that there's indoor storage. That's it. I don't have any other questions. Okay. And on that uh, recycling, Ben, can that be included as a technical item, Bruce? Yes, I, I wrote that down. I, I can yeah. I can do that. Because I thought we were required to recycle in the, in the state. Okay. Uh, Halzad, do you have any additional items? You did have your sign. Yeah, yeah, a couple of things, but not to completely drop just while we're on the subject. I see if they've they've met the letter of the law with the six spaces for, for an apartment complex putting just exterior bike racks is just for guests. Nobody wants to leave their their bikes outside if they care about them. And now that we're moving into thousand dollar electric bikes, which is going to be what everybody has, uh, I'm I'm just putting it out there for staff that we're going to want to do something for exterior garages, which they seem to have fallen out of favor. We used to have them 15 years ago, these little little bicycle garages. Well, every campus had them and they kind of went away, but I think we've got to get back into that thought if you're going to provide X number of cars and X number of bicycle garages, which are just the little boxes with a lockable door. But I, I see this this meets the letter of the law, so, 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 so be it. Uh, so for the sign, yeah, I think the sign that's there is completely inappropriate for this and on the wrong street, since you can't get there from there. And uh, don't, we don't put wayfinding signs like that for apartments and, and in regular housing. It's, that's intended for, for hotels. So I think you want to put some kind of a marker out there on Route 12, fine, but it should be a little, a very small pedestal sign. Offhand, if there's anything on the building at all, I would think there 
that would cover it and have a nicer sign on King's Highway where the actual entrance to the building actually is. I would not want to see that existing sign stay in any form. Um, for the sidewalks, yeah, there's a sidewalk across the frontage and you can't get there from here. If I was going to walk from the building to go to Walmart and to, and there, that's the only place to cross the street. So I'd have to walk up to Walmart and from there I can walk to everything else. That's why you would want to move into these apartments that there happens to be a couple places to eat and and a Kohl's and a Walmart and stop and shop. And I can't get there without just crossing the grass, it looks like. So should we, I understand the property lines there, but is it up to us to put something in to get them over there and or something within their parking lot to aim them at it right now? You just kind of walk across the driveway. Your best bet is to, I don't know, cross over into five guys somehow, which is probably the closest thing. But somehow or another, we need to get their interior sidewalk to connect to the exterior sidewalk. It does not now. Could, could I could I address that? Please? I wouldn't even think it was mm -hmm. uh, sure. Let me just let's finish the thought, please do. But I wouldn't Certainly. even think it would go straight out because nobody wants to go straight out where 100% of the people are going to go is so towards that intersection at Walmart. So that's kind of what I'd be thinking of. Rather than exiting on King's Highway and walking all the way around, that's not what they're going to do. They're going to walk out on the towards the road. Go ahead. Um, yeah, the, the, the crosswalk is located at the intersection of King's Highway and, um, and Gold Star. So... Uh, I don't think it's any more advantageous to be connecting a sidewalk in that direction. It actually may encourage people to cross the highway illegally. Uh, I would propose that they do follow King's Highway up to the intersection where there is where the, the traffic is is uh, less on King's Highway, where they can cross and get to a crosswalk and go safely across the street. Well, the sidewalk already links the Groton Inn and Suites all the way down and there's it's a nice big there, there's not much encouragement to step out across the street because there's no place to go so i think the sidewalk already does a pretty good job of steering you exactly where you're supposed to go on beyond five guys and to, to where the crosswalk is so I, I i'm i don't think there's really any concern about that it's probably a easily a 15 foot or at least more than 10 feet between the sidewalk and the road and if you crossed over any place but the intersection, you would be nowhere. So, you know, I don't, I don't think that's a problem at all. I just want to make sure that's not a, I think they're already going to do it. I don't think you're going to stop people from going that way. Nobody's going to want to go the wrong way because they think it's safer. They're going to go the way, the short way, and that's the short way. So I would just think you should facilitate it rather than have them go wherever. right now it doesn't connect even even if it's in the front then it doesn't connect to the front to the sidewalk on on king's highway there's no real connection to it i would forego that in favor well, actually i would like to see that connection too if this is really going to be apartments this is all one better apartments it's all single single people in there this is all uh, single family houses out there i don't think there's going to be much Loving those two, so I'm not that concerned about that. But it certainly should connect to where the people are going to go, and that's to the sidewalk that we put in, and and it goes to the right place. It isn't even that far. You're certainly going to be cutting across to to five guys, giving your clientele. I've got the aerial up. If, uh, if I, I can't seem to share. I'm not sure what's locking it, but uh, if I could share, I've got the area up. Yeah, I'm looking at it myself. Um, so one one dilemma is uh, we don't have pedestrian crossing right here, um, which that probably needs to be added on the on the on the town's part. 
um, so that if, if you did come up here and, and then travel east or come out of the south of the building and travel east, there's, there's no connection here um, that, that's you know, possibly safe. So I, I would say that, that the town would need to, to make this connection. And, and I, you know, I think we could, I don't think it's a big deal to add a sidewalk that, that runs out to here because you're right. There's going to be a burn grass uh, path <laughs> if we don't add it, you know. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's. Uh, I think that. I think you're exactly right too. Is that if you do this, and I don't know how we got away with it for so long, not having a a, a crosswalk, at least across King's Highway in front there. That's that's bizarre that it's not there. We even have the curb cuts on the sidewalk to get to it. So. Yeah, right. So right. Town should do that, mm -hmm. and I think you should put probably an angled out there or something. If we go straight out, then nobody's going to obey that. Very often, you know, you do the campus thing and just see where people are, where the mud starts to show up for people walking and then put the sidewalk there. But I think you could probably steer it how you'd like it into that corner. That's good for me. Mm -hmm. That's all I've got. All right. Of course, that's, that's an action for the town too, so. Mm -hmm. Hey, uh, so Sutherland, do you have any comments? No, I think these are all good comments people have, and I agree with uh, we should look at the biking situation. I think that's uh, that's really important. So that's all I have. Thank you. Okay. Steve Hochuk. Yeah, I would just reiterate the um, removal of the um, the big sign. If it's on the, you know, if it's not going to be uh, repurposed. That'd be it. Kevin mm -hmm. Fitfall? Um, yeah, a couple of things. Number one, um, I agree with um, what we're trying to do with the sidewalk there. It seems to make sense. And um, if we could include that just in the uh, technical work with the planning staff following approval or not, um, I think that would be very important. But I, I did have a question for Bruce. So um, if we look at the special permit side of this, which I think we all embraced as the right thing to do. Um, I, I, I look now at you know the potential parking where um, as we make these conversions, I think I understand what how a hotel commerce works and the traffic works. And it seems like to the developer it would be very beneficial if we do offer more parking. So what kind of latitude do we have potentially, you know, to provide that, Bruce? Well, currently with this application, um, we don't really have the latitude to allow them to provide more parking. Um, really, the only way for the applicant to be able to do that would be to ask for a variance for more parking. Um, we, we did just amend the zoning regulations, and I'm, I'm not sure if we added more parking for the one-bedroom units. Deb, I'm not sure if you know that. Uh, the state, the state yeah. has not a law that they just, a statute they just passed about that. Right, and, and the new zoning regulations that you passed back in August actually address that. So yeah, there are, but but this application came in before those were effective. Okay, so our message to the developer could be that a subsequent variance um, could possibly be entertained, correct? Oh. Well, it could just be a, a actually just a site plan. Model. Like one parking spot for a one bedroom unit. Isn't that what the state, the, the minimum is? Uh, that, that, that's correct right now. Right. And, Bruce is, and Bruce is right as well. Um, once this is approved, the um, applicant could submit uh, a modification to this plan or, or an administrative site plan that meets the new zoning and add more. Um, the, the only thing we need to balance that against is um, the, the impervious surface in the WRPD area. Right. Okay. Thank you. That's all, Mr. Chair. Okay. All right. I didn't have any... uh, Mr. Chairman, may I just make one more comment? Oh, go ahead. Oh, um, I don't... <laughs> this is tapping into my memory here, but I, I know that when we did uh, the application many years ago for uh, Five Guys, that there was discussion at that point about that crosswalk across King's Highway. 
and I don't remember how it was resolved or if it is what it is now or something's been changed. But I remember having a conversation about that. I don't you're, know if it's you're right. <laughs> that was that was uh, Diane's project. Um, so I don't I don't remember what the outcome was, but you're absolutely right. There was a discussion about that. So we'll discussion. we'll check. Yeah. Well, the thing is, is that that I mean, obviously that intersection and with this is now changing. If you have people, I think that when that application was made, I, re I recall is that, you know, it was coming from uh, the burger place and they didn't anticipate a lot of walking traffic. But now that we have residential in this area, we would, I, I would like to see us encourage uh, pedestrian traffic across that road. So I don't, I'm, I mean, maybe it's something that we need to address. I don't know if it's through this application, but uh, that side, that crosswalk would seem to be like a critical uh, piece of the puzzle at this point to me. I remember there was a lot of discussion over crosswalk across 184. Yeah, well, we went, we were, I, I, you know, it's all that, kind of a blur, but. Because that's the one that's really important. Well, I, yeah, and I think and that we did work a, with that one, but there's, you know, state, you, they had, to, I think it was a state issue is the thing, is that it got really complicated. It was a state to get, had to put a light in. Uh, yeah, but that's no, it's terribly expensive, and someone convinced us that no one would ever walk there. That <laughs> was the one, that was across 184. Yeah. So oh, anyway, don't they have one there now? There is one, yes. Yep. Yeah, but it, um, the one across Kings Highway now would be beneficial, it would seem, for this they project. Should least, I think they should at least stripe it. Uh, I don't know how many people you go down that way, but well, I mean, none if uh, there's not a crosswalk or no, none no, safe. I mean, cars, cars. I don't. Yeah, I don't know. All right. Anyway, Personally, I, I don't know if if what? maybe. Uh, Diane can weigh in on this at some point in the future, but mm -hmm. frankly, all. whether it's a, a whether it's an apartment or a hotel, I'm sorry. Every time I've stayed at a hotel, I've had need to go to a Walmart or someplace like it if yeah. I'm staying for more than a couple nights. Mm -hmm. And this is a wonderful location where there it is. I'm not going to jump in my car if I can avoid it. Oh. No, mm -hmm. I think that we were focused at that point on the burger place, and that was. Probably a mistake, but yeah, I that happens. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That would be the other place you could put an internal sidewalk to the burger <laughs> the parking well, lot there. Yeah. But yeah, so back to the site plan. Uh, we had a, I think we had those three items. I don't know if they can be addressed as technical items or not, Bruce. I think the recycling one is easy, but the internal sidewalk one and the sign, you think they can be handled a, with a technical mm -hmm. issue? I, I would probably add those two as modifications. I think that at least the sidewalk would be best to put it in as a... Yeah, the sidewalk, mm -hmm. um, the sign the, probably The internal is... sidewalk. Yeah, the, the sign's probably more a tech item because that, that is allowed by zoning. Yeah. But if, if the applicant agrees to take it off of the plan, then we can just address it that way rather than mandating it. I would think he'd want to anyway. <laughs> to me, that's something that would just not, he'd want to do. But, but the sidewalk, I, I agree that. But, uh, so. Um, Mr. Mr. Chair, I had a question, if I may. Yes, go ahead. You, you, you're, con you're using terms like technical, and, and I just want to make sure I'm clear on which is which. Uh, well, a technical versus. item yep. would be one that the staff would take care of, and we would not have to put it in a motion. Okay. Hmm. You know, they're usually minor, minor type items. So they would be handled administratively by your staff? Well, yes, and it would eventually have to be probably put on the, the plan, but yes, we have to add it as a motion type item. And then a modification. Put as well. a, a note maybe on the plan or something. Okay. 
type that type of an issue. If yeah, they, we, we'd be happy to condition uh, the the recycling, um, the signage. Uh, we we would like to have to we would consider, uh, but um, it, it does have some uh, value if uh, my, my client is is looking for a tenancy to use it in that interested. in that manner. Uh, well, that's alone. why it could be treated as a technical item. Okay. The staff could, you know, resolve the details. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. That sounds good. Thank you. Uh, maybe that's a better description of, or why you do it that way. Sure. If you don't want to specify the details of, without having more information. Um, the only thing about the uh, sidewalk is I, I think it would encroach into this. I believe it's a state right of way there. I could be wrong. So I, I, I don't know. Uh, what the implications of that would, would be, we would likely, I believe, need to get a state permit for that. Um, just want to bring that to your attention. You think that actually the right away goes down to the property line? The sidewalk you think is on state property? It, it would be, well, if you wanted to connect it to the existing um, sidewalk on Gold Star Highway, um, the property line is right here. So um, the sidewalk from the property line to the existing sidewalk is all within the state right away. Mm -hmm. the, the applicant would have to contact Department of Transportation to get a permit and approval to do that. Is that, I guess that that's, uh, is that even within our purview of going off site? Is this off site improvement? Uh, yeah, we've, we've done that in the past, certainly required internal sidewalks. Um, the reason it wasn't brought up with this application is because they had an internal sidewalk over here, which kind of connects into the into the site down here. But um, I, I certainly it's a good point that, you know, the, the quicker, easier route would be right here. So I, gonna, I, yeah, people are going to do it or go over to five guys. But that's probably you got something in between there. You know, on their parking lot. I just wanted to bring it to your attention, uh, just that it would have to be conditioned upon state state DOT approval. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, would that mean that the applicant would come back to us or would we just figure would be if the state for it not approve it for some reason? Well, I was just trying to come up with the words here to, and I was thinking maybe uh, you could add an internal sidewalk to uh, connecting to the sidewalk uh, on Gold Star Highway shall be provided, maybe we should just, add, if permitted by the state DOT or, hmm? Yeah, contingent on state DOT approval. So playing devil's advocate, I want to make sure that the applicant applies for that approval. I would think there would be no reason why the state wouldn't, unless nobody applied for it. Right, but if the state says no, I don't see that um, trying to hold up the applicant as far as a 
certificate of occupancy or moving or something, right? I agree. Right. Provided he actually applied for it. Yeah, no, then the applicant would come back for us and ask for uh, relief from it, I would think. Or another another way to get there. And I think that's the way that I would rather see it. Where it would just, just leave it as a provide. Yeah, so provide it. And then if, if it's not provided, then come back to us and ask for relief, which you know, I not wouldn't be opposed to that if the reason was that the state has said no. Yeah. Well, isn't that a lot of excess behavior for the yeah, application? Yeah, that requires another application. Well, right. only if the state says no. Yeah, but then then our requirement but goes why, away. Why don't we just say contingent to state the DOT approval? How about contingent on an unsuccessful request oh, for on. state to? I say that otherwise. You know, if stuff happens and Mr. Cherenza isn't part of it and then next guy does, never applies and says, well, the state never approved it. Of course, they never approved it. Then it was never requested. So I like the idea of just saying contingent, uh, uh, ex, ex, contingent on an unsuccessful, how do you want to put the word? Unsuccessful request. Why don't we just request. say contingent to state DOT approval? Because you won't get a... Because if, if it's never if it's They'd never have requested, to show that, yeah, but if... They haven't shown that this, uh, unless unless you say unless not just pro, just not permitted by the state. I think we're overthinking. Or the state takes too much time to do it, right? Mm -hmm. So, so practically yeah. speaking, how this would play out right. is when they when they request a certificate of site plan compliance in advance of the COs for the building, and the sidewalk is not there, we would ask the applicant for proof that he applied and a letter denying it before we mm -hmm. signed on that before they got the CO. Yeah, that, so we just ha yeah, I, that's what I thought then. Hmm? Okay. So we could just say it's contingent, contingent uh, to state DOT approval. All right, does anyone have any? So the other, the sign issue and the and the recycling bin could be treated as technical items. Then. You don't see a problem with that, do you, Deb? Yeah. So I'll make a motion then to approve site plan 21-12 for days in conversion, 135 Gold Star Highway with the following modifications. One, an internal sidewalk to connect to the sidewalk adjacent to Gold Star Highway shall be provided contingent to D state DOT approval. Two, a full set of floor plans and changing this shall be, changing is to shall be submitted to the Office of Planning and Development Services prior to, I'm getting rid of that, the prior to recording, and get rid of the, uh, the final mylars. Technical items as raised by staff shall be addressed. Is there a second? Second. Moved in second. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, then we'll vote on the, on the motion to approve a site plan 21-12. All those in favor say aye. As, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion is carried unanimously. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate your consideration and your time this evening. All right. Six Thank new you. apartments coming in. Good. Okay. No old business. New business. We have new applications. First one: uh, cannabis established zoning zoning text amendment. Where do we stand on that now, Deb? So, so we're going to schedule this hearing for the first meeting in October and internally staff has already started working on yet another text amendment um, regarding where these establishments might be allowed. I'm mm -hmm. hoping we will have some kind of discussion at the next meeting to get your feelings um, regarding which zones, um, whether or not special permits are required, um, and then very quickly thereafter. Um, gets you a draft to look at. All right. So this text amendment that we 
we aren't going to see until the agenda's out. Uh, that's just going to say it's prohibited or? That's exactly right. It defines, it has a couple of new definitions and then it has those uses in the use table with X's all the way across, not allowed. Okay. All right. I just didn't, because when we go to the public hearing, we just ought to have, make sure the commission doesn't have any questions. That's what, exactly. the only reason I brought that up. Because hmm? we're going to go put it to pub, the public mm -hmm. hearing would be next. It will be in October, so I can get you the application to look at if you like at the next meeting, so you know what it, what it says. Oh, okay. So it will go. Yep. Oh, yeah. Okay. It won't be till October. But, but you can't, oh, you can't right. comment on it. You can't. We can't talk oh, no. about it because it's the hearing schedule. Okay. So no, no, at least I you don't know wanna, what it is. Yeah. No, I don't yeah. want to do that. But we won't even be able to comment on it before dis discuss it at all. No. Okay. I didn't know how that worked when we were proposing. <laughs> well, if we weren't trying to move so quickly, we would oh, have no. done it in the usual fashion and got you a copy of it, and then and then made the application. Okay. All right. Oh, I mean the because I've signed the application, it's already chipped in stone. All right. That's why. Then we have. F factor apartments on there. That's that. What's that? This is another conversion at Factory Square. I'm I'm not sure uh -huh. why they why they called it F factor, but it's it's like the one that we already looked at. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Not re retail to. Uh, right. That's right. Retail or mm -hmm. yeah, another use to to multi unit. Okay. And Chelsea Groton, is there a big modification to the building? Um, to the outside of the building and then adding some ATMs and reworking the parking lot. I thought it was a major change, but it, it's all just external. Um, well, inside, I think they've been doing renovation. Oh. But, oh, but there's, they don't make it. No, there's one small addition that's being proposed as part of this, an outside space to meet people. Mm -hmm. All right, and no referrals, and we have our regular meeting schedule, which is part of the agenda package. Bill and I discussed this before the meeting due to the uh, November 8th schedule is voting day, and it, we feel that's probably not a good day to hold the meeting and would like to move, change that to the 10th of November, which would be Thursday. Does anyone have any concerns with the, the schedule other than that one item? No. Hmm? None. So then I'll, I'll move to, uh, Accept the 2022 meeting schedule proposed with the with the uh, November meeting changed to November 10th, 2022. Is there a second to the motion? Second. It's moved and seconded. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, we'll vote on the motion for the 2022 schedule. All those favor in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Hmm? So the motion is carried unanimously. Okay, next uh, is reported chair. I uh, signed off the, uh, the plans for uh, Little Gall Marine drawings uh, last week. So that's on its way, I guess, to start working. Uh, let's see. And this noise situation on that we've had on uh, Willow Point. <laughs> I don't know if we wanted to have that added as an agenda item for to well, discuss I can... that further. I can briefly update you. They, um, Harbor View is actually in the WW zone, the working waterfront. Right. So it's not a residential zone. 
um, and the structures out there were pre-existing units that the former zoning official determined that they existed and they could be renovated. Um, they do have an administrative site plan approval to hold temporary events up to six a year. Um, one of the conditions of that is that the outside um, activity has to stop by 10 and any music has to stop by nine. Um, so I'll, I'll discuss this with our code enforcement officer and we will um, we'll certainly contact the owner and, and get him within the bounds of his approval. Um, in addition to that, I can tell you a number of complaints about noise in downtown Mystic and we're working hand in hand with the police department to try to get that under control. And so we may just add this to their list. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so chair, can, Ms. Chair, can I ask a question? Yes. So, um, so Deb, that was actually very good because I, I didn't realize that, right? Um, on those conditions, et cetera. Um, and so, so when the citizens came before us today, we don't, as planning and zoning, we don't have any enforcement side of this. But there is an enforcement side within the town, correct? There, there is, um, right. We have a code enforcement official. Right. He can he can only enforce, you know, the rules of the zoning regulations. And if there's not a regulation that addresses what their concern is, he has no enforcement ability. Um, however, the police department they do have the ability to um, issue citations for nuisances. And nuisance is very broadly defined. And, and that's the tact we've been using in downtown Mystic because we don't right. have a noise ordinance. Correct. But if we take a look at um, where the citizens came tonight and what appears to be the zoning um, regulations down there, there appears to be there appears to be a violation. I'm not saying there is, but within what's been brought forward today to what you stated, there appears to be um, a very serious problem. Right. Yes, okay. absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Well, this is the ASP. The, the zoning regulation isn't very clear whether you have to have a, an ASP for every event or just, I guess you have one for events, period. For for temporary events up to 60. Yeah, so, which is what the zoning regulation allows, as long as you have an ASP. That's right. But should it be, mod can it be modified to say no? Only acoustical or not? Not at, not at this point, um, but it, it, no, not at this point. I mean, once an approval's been given, it's been given. And it's forever and ever. Right, until the use is discontinued. So, but but again, we, I, I understand that the, the neighbors may not have been able to get in touch with the owner. Um, staff has a really good relationship with Well, him. that's just a separate, yeah. So, yeah, we're going to put, we will use that. Mm -hmm. That's great. Thank you. Right. Does what, what, what does the nine o'clock music shut off mean? It, I mean, they're playing until wee hours in the morning is what we're well, told. No, they're playing till 10. They actually stopped playing at 10 o'clock. Well, they should have uh, stopped at nine. Oh, at nine? The well, music they went for 10. Music should have stopped at nine outside of activity. Oh, no, they kept going playing until time. Exactly. So that's so we'll get code enforcement. So then this is a zoning enforcement issue then. Yes. Or, or at least that part of it is. Yes. Yeah. Up okay. until so, 10 o'clock yes. and then it becomes the police. Yes. Yeah. But but if it's if it's incredibly loud, I mean again, we don't have a noise wow. ordinance. If it's incredibly loud and it's 7 30 in the evening, all the police, it's a nuisance. Right. Okay. Yeah, By the way, I, I could hear it in my neighborhood. Wow. Okay. Could you really? One thing I didn't hear yes. was, um, did any of the people report that have they exceeded the number of events? Has there been more than six? I, I don't believe that there has. Um, I'm in touch somewhat with Bruce McDermott, um, and he knows that there's only six allowed. Okay. Um, yeah, if they haven't, then they aren't that noisy. This was the first one that's really been bad. Yeah. Hmm. They might have had another one that you could hear the yeah. noise. This was really loud. I thought it was a shipyard that was going on there. No, the shipyard has them. They aren't as loud. 
No, I agree. I thought it was, Jeff. Because I can just barely hear him. But this one I could hear very clearly. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Deb, do we have a way to be in touch with these people, Mr. McDermott and Mr. Curry? Certainly, so Mr. That, certainly, Mr. Are, are they still listening? No, they're not. Um, but but I can. I'll <laughs> certainly reach out to, to Bruce. Um, and I, and if he has contact information for his neighbor, I. Yeah, can, I mean, just so yeah. that people know that we. I mean, because I yep. think one thing is with the way that we have to work. It takes a long time and people think that we, we're not doing anything when in fact we're doing the best we can. So anyway, thank yep, you. I'll, I'll contact Bruce, yep. Okay, good. Okay, report or commission. Does anyone on the commission have anything to report? I don't have anything to report, but I would certainly like to sick for, uh, Bruce Lofgren on a, some sort of an or, uh, regulation regarding bicycle storage. <laughs> uh, I, I wrote that down. That was actually- Yeah, that was, that well, was I mean, you know, we have this new business and I was over there about a week ago and those bicycles sell for five, $6,000. There is no way people are gonna be leaving and people are buying them. Uh, they're gonna be leaving them outside. Yeah, it just really isn't gonna happen. Yeah, just regular mountain bikes are several thousand. Yeah, no, oh. it's just too much of an investment and the other thing is, is right. that especially in a place like the WRPD, this is what cuts down on our parking need. Mm. So the, you know, the more it's bicycles we can get in these places, the better we're going to be. I think. Okay. Thank you, I Bruce. I have one little item. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> is that uh, it's it's uh, it's a generality, but I think we should. Uh, I was just doing some measurements of some submittals we have. I think we should make a point of not accepting submittals that use the term approximately ever <laughs> that they should always be minimum or maximum because approximately can get us into trouble now obviously we're looking at three water street but honestly i really think he was trying to do the right thing but in the submittal i, I was walking around feeling terrible that they had submitted the uh a drawing that showed air conditioning units what it said was that the railing was three feet high, and that the air conditioning units were approximately three foot 11 high. They're obviously not. They're double. So yeah. they're, they're probably, probably well over five feet. So what we were expecting and what we saw, and what we were shown was approximately 11 inches. And at what point does approximately 11 inches not be two and a half feet, which is why it's no, no good. So probably could have avoided that if we just said, okay, maximum four feet. We could have lived with that. We probably wouldn't have gotten into this fix. Okay. I know we're going for something saying, okay, the screening has to be as high as the units themselves. Uh, but then there's a surprise after the fact anyway, because the units come in. The, guy, the mechanical guy didn't read those plans, and he just put them on a pedestal and said, here you go. And in this case, the owner let it go because it was approximate. So that said, do we have any more report from the owners of Free Water? I know we put a little face shield over the fan, so it's only 80% as obnoxious as it was before. But uh, incidentally, he was talking about doing other screening. I'm not sure what that could possibly be. But it'd be nice to know from staff as if they've heard anything because it's still a precedent that we don't want to go anywhere near. No. Hmm. Yeah. Anyone else have anything? Report of staff. Does staff have anything? Uh, anything additional? No. Light report. You have that. Does anyone have any questions on that? Or does staff have anything to add other than the report? And we received a Federation newsletter, which I assume everybody carefully read. <laughs> that has all your new parking regulations. Yeah. And we got the August ASP report. Does anyone have anything else? Uh, well, um, I just think the, um, <clears throat> the issues they're bringing up 
in the Connecticut Federation of Planning and Zoning Agencies newsletter are really significant, personally. And the fact that here we are, and it reminds me of some other um, applications or other things that are in the works that sometimes people don't feel <clears throat> there's a transparency, certainly there used to be when uh, before COVID times. Um, but here you have, and I don't know who it is. I think I would be interested in knowing who's, who proposed, I mean, was it one group? Who proposed all this legislation um, to change zoning? Um, to me, it, the way it appeared from something that's more meeting what local people might think is appropriate to something that's being handed down from uh, what, Hartford or wherever, that now all this is, you know, you have to comply and do we have the opportunity to question or public hearing or any advance warning? Um, so it just seemed extremely heavy handed and certainly a new precedent. Um, I've never seen that federation get too excited about anything, but it seems that they have a good point here. Mm -hmm. Well, there was a lot of stuff that didn't get approved. Is that the good side of this? <laughs> oh, I mean, it could have been worse. Stuff that was come up. It but, was a lot. A lot of it addressed trying to address affordable housing, and it's not realistic. Right. But they it's wanted awesome. to have no zoning around the transportation center, mm. and if you didn't have one, they were going to designate what the center was. Oh, I mean, it was a lot of stuff is bad. A lot of precedents. I, I don't know if staff knows where this is coming from, or there's another article that would give a little more color about the background of this. I'd be very interested. So, I mean, I, I think a number of different parties raised a number of these different legislative initiatives here. Um, a group called Desegregate Connecticut, who is concerned with affordable housing, um, mm -hmm. certainly had a hand in the accessory apartments. Um, and I'm not sure where the recreational cannabis came from. Um, um, outdoor dining is, you know, a result of, of COVID. And again, I don't know which which person raised it. I think you can you can dig into the, the Connecticut government legislation site and, and figure right. it out. I don't know. I'm trying for, to avoid that. I know. I know. <laughs> it's cumbersome. Run, run for state rep. <laughs> oh, there's a good idea. <laughs> Not. <laughs> I'll drive you up the wall. <laughs> yeah, really. This will look okay. nice. But you know, if you want to keep on top of this, um, the Connecticut Planners Association has a presence up at the Legislative Office Building, and they frequently update the website mm -hmm. and 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 provide what testimony that they're offering the legislators. It's a, it's an easy way to kind of keep track of what's being raised and what the implications might be planning wise. Great. Okay. Thanks, Deb. Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, so our next meeting is September 28th. If no one has anything else, I'll make a motion for adjournment. So a second. Second. Moved and seconded. We're done. All right. We'll see you on the 28th. Thank you. Bye, Thank everyone. You. Thanks. Bye. Bye.